Okay, so today I have an issue. An issue I have is <clears throat> kind of like when I uh, introduced this channel that uh, there are several YouTube channels that I feel like they kind of they kind of left off in a bad spot. They didn't finish an idea and um, or maybe they did. They finished the best that they were willing, but I had questions and I had no choice but to answer them myself. So one of the questions is how do these bullets explosively perform at 200 yards? And various, various bullets. I'm, I'm curious how they perform. Um, and I decided to answer this question, um, kind of set my mind to it a couple weeks ago. One of those coyotes I shot was, I shot him with a 73 grain Hornady ELD match. And I pinned him right kind of through the collarbone. And there was about an 8 to 10 inch completely pulverized area. Half of his spine was vaporized and pulverized into powder. And um, I was so impressed with the performance of this bullet that I picked it up and saved it. It's probably not going to want to focus here, but uh, this thing absolutely got mangled. And I weighed it. And I will add some photos in of this bullet. And what I found was a tiny little lead pill that was just the very, very base of this bullet and part of the copper jacket. And he had a shattered collarbone, a shattered shoulder, um, several shattered ribs, and a completely pulverized spine. And I found that little lead pill about 14 inches down his meat. So... Mm, and he dropped. I mean, completely dropped. I mean, like, sack of dookie. Um, so, and that was, oh, probably about 80 yards, that shot. 80 to 100. And it was a week after that, I shot a coyote right through the neck, sideways, side on, at about 200 to 250 yards with one of these 73 grain ELDs and it just blew a hole clean through and severed his spine and shattered it into powder and um, the dog was completely paralyzed and you know not with the living um, just the hydrostatic shock was absolutely incredible and a quick side note hydrostatic shock is a thing and I've heard guys say there's there can't be such a thing as hydrostatic shock or that it isn't, uh, that it's a misnomer. It's not. Um, hydrostatic means static water. And then shock to that static water causes a disruption. That is the hydrostatic shock. And it just, it disrupts so much of the nervous system and, and the pulmonary system. Um, the, the cardiovascular system, it just disrupts everything. Um, so anyway, the, the terminal performance of this 73 grain ELD, uh, it really impressed me. I would use this to hunt deer and in my state, it is legal to hunt deer with a 22 center fire. It's not legal to hunt elk with, and I'm not certain I would really select this cartridge if I was a rifle hunter for elk. I'm, I'm a bow hunter for elk anyways, but I would absolutely select this load right here for deer. And it's my most accurate load out of this entire um, setup that I have. This is absolutely my most accurate load. Um, and so I pretty much have selected to run this in my rifle uh, full time. However, I also coyote hunt a privately owned sheep ranch and there are coyotes close. I haven't gotten one from that ranch yet. There's lots of bobcats. I'm certain cougars come in there. They have problems with sheep getting picked off 
And that was what I originally bought these 53 grain VMAX for is it's kind of a crowded area. And I think the closest houses um, in one direction are probably a mile or more, but uh, the owner and family, you know, they all live within, I don't know, half a mile of where I do a fair portion of my coyote hunting there. And um, I was very afraid of shooting through a dog and either harming something or someone that absolutely should not be harmed or shooting through a dog and hitting a sheep. And there's lots of lambs, lots of sheep. This is their sole livelihood is this sheep ranch. And so absolutely the last thing I want after getting permission to hunt this beautiful place is to have to go and tell them that I own or how can I fix this? <laughs> I've killed one of your sheep or severely maimed one of your sheep. So I avoided that. I started hand loading these 53 grain VMAX and these are very close to these in accuracy. They're not exactly a four or 500 yard load. Um, I haven't tried them at anything over 200. Uh, they're damn fine at 200. Uh, more than sufficient and so I, I wanted to see what ballistically these bullets do at 200 yards as far as explosive terminal performance. I already know what the ballistic terminal performance is by seeing that cavity and trail through a coyote, through a solid animal that it went clean through his tissue 14 inches deep and left a trail of wreckage. So I wanted to see this. Um, so what I have for you guys is 200 yards out of an AR-15. I have shot two watermelons and one with a 73 grain ELD match going about 2,700 to 2,750 feet per second. Um, the book says a 20 inch barrel is at 20... Let me see, I've got it written somewhere. I would have to get into my book. I think it's 2850 with this load. And to subtract a certain percent uh, for an 18 inch barrel, which my rifle has an 18 inch barrel. And it brought me somewhere around that 2700 foot per second mark. And that's, like I've said, fast powder. You don't lose a lot with fast powder in short barrels, so. That's this. And then these I've done the math on. I don't have a chronograph. I don't care to own a chronograph. I might end up having to get one if I want to share data with guys and they really are interested. I might have to end up getting one. But this I did the math. The 53 grain VMAX are scooting along at somewhere around 3,100 feet per second at the muzzle. Um, but by 200 yards, this one has already actually dropped. The drag factor is quite different if memory serves me. And if you guys are interested in this data, I will hopefully see a comment and I can really, really nerd out on numbers with you guys. So with that, let's get into the data and um, I'm gonna have a follow-up video after we do the shooting. Uh, me and my wife are gonna go to one of my favorite shooting spots up in the woods. And we're gonna set this up and build you guys a test and then we'll follow up afterwards. This is 73 grain ELD match out of a 223 at 200 yards. slow motion footage says.
Okay, this is a 53 grain VMAX versus a watermelon at 200 yards. All right, looks like the uh, 53 grain VMAX also did a number on the watermelon at 200 yards. I would say that's plenty explosive. I'm very interested to see how the slow-mo turned out. see that in a little bit if you can't see the landing is there so this is the end of a dead end road you go up that road and it winds around past those two trees right there and there's a little turnaround for the log trucks and that is 208 yards to this spot here So not exactly 200 yards, but plus or minus eight, which in this case, plus like 208 yards is just fine. All right, so here it is. And this is kind of what it's all about for me is um, success. Um, killing an animal, you know, that I'm gonna use for a fur or for, for food um, having a really successful range trip with some groups, just bullets stacked right on top of each other. Um, getting some really cool video footage that I think is incredibly interesting. Like that's kind of what this is all about. And, um, sharing with you guys, I'm, I'm really excited to share this. Um, I'm impressed, but not shocked. Um, absolutely everybody and their mother pretty much uh, knows the VMAX bullet so much that a ballistic tipped bullet, VMAX is now a slang term for that. Like when I pick up some 22 mag um, polymer tipped ammunition, I call it VMAX. It is VMAX style at least. Like Hornady has pretty much ubiquitously taken over the uh, polymer tipped uh, bullet market and so you know they're absolutely synonymous with being the most explosive varmint bullet that uh, money can buy and it's arguable i'm sure there's better stuff out there but um you know for 23 cents a bullet i uh really don't think you can do much better for 23 cents a bullet if at all and the accuracy you know just considering that my first my first ever set of load development, I was pulling 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and a 0.325 inch three holer group. I didn't end up selecting that 0.325 inch group because it was a little lower in charge weight and I wanted to get a little closer to maximum. But as far as accuracy goes, they're, I mean, they're almost a match grade bullet, or perhaps they are a match grade bullet. And um, I was a little frightened to shoot VMAX out of my rifles because uh, they're 53 grain, they're varminter bullets, they're thin jacketed, they're explosive design, and I've got a 1 in 7 and a 1 in 8 twist barrel. And they shoot them just fine, and they make it to the target, and they're deadly accurate. They do everything they're supposed to do, and uh, fast twist, if it's uh, any sort of... Um, sufficient quality of barrel which these are both the cheapest ars money can buy you know the bullets hold together they do what they're supposed to do so basically what i'd consider to be a match grade bullet for 23 cents a pop uh you can't really beat that and you couple that with it 200 yards it is still performing 
how um, these guys on YouTube <clears throat> have been showing me that they perform at 10 yards. Well, yes, at 10 yards, I've shot uh, similar things like watermelons and milk, milk jugs full of water uh, with a 44 Magnum, with a 45 ACP, with a 3030. I've shot things that are hydraulic water um, at very close range with various things. And guess what happens? It explodes. Hydrostatic shock, <laughs> you know? So seeing what these bullets do at 10 yards is not what I care about. Like, I don't call that terminal performance. That's 10 yard performance. And, um, you know, I really, and at 100 yards, that's good. And, you know, most of the things I shoot at are at 100 or, or less. Uh, but 200, it, it's really good to know that my maximum range with that 55 grain bullet, it's still going to perform. Because that sheep branch, about 200 yards is as far as I'm going to shoot. And if I've got longer shots, then guess what? I've got these ELDs for that. Um, so that defeats the purpose. Anywhere where I don't have to worry about what's behind what I'm shooting, um, especially with coyotes, I would just as soon rather shoot these ELDs. You can see the performance of those. I would say maybe a tiny bit less explosive, but plenty. And I bet you at further ranges when the 53 grainer starts to peter out, this one's still going to do it. And even though it might not explode, it's going to peel back and expand. And that's speculation. But, you know, I've been shooting and hunting for a long time. Not as long as some of you old gray beards out there. But, you know, I've got more rounds through my rifles than, than most guys get in 10 years. And that's in a year, you know, that I, I do a lot of shooting. So... Over 200 yards, I'm probably going for these 73 grain ELDs. They're so accurate and they carry so much more energy. Um, 300 feet per second, you know, when you're sacrificing 20 grains uh, of bullet weight and especially downrange, uh, the, the energy retention is incredible. So these bullets, although they're leaving the muzzle at 2,700, so, you know, 300 feet a second, 400 feet a second slower than the uh, 53 grains by 300 yards. These are now going faster than the 53 grains are at, at 300 yards. So these carry their energy a lot better and um, they're just more suitable for longer range stuff. And um, I'd, I'd prefer to have more bullet for the job. So um, the curiosity is satisfied. Um, I think they both performed uh, incredibly well. They didn't, uh, do any of that failure to expand baloney there was nothing but lead dust uh to see in those watermelons pretty much and i'm sure there was some jacket around but uh i would call that a success and i would say that both of these are <laughs> plenty suitable to cause hydrostatic shock at least to a ball about that big which any animal that i'm going to be shooting with a 223 with an ar-15 that's more than sufficient da sufficient damage. That's that's an entire lung, perhaps two lungs, a lung and a heart. Um, as you can see from that other coyote that I killed, uh, you know, a trail of wreckage that long. So, you know, it, it pretty much uh, goes to show you if you if your shot placement is good, uh, you're you're gonna have them in the bag with either one of these bullets. And I would I would say that Hornady really really nailed it with these they they really hit the mark and, and they they built some accurate stuff that really goes so that'll do it have a good one